All right, one more. Uh, chapter three, let's talk about it. Dad says it's time to go back to school. So here I am, back in Mrs. Brooks' room, sitting at the little round table. I look at the walls, and not much has changed except the mad face on the facial expressions chart now has a mustache. I know because I've looked at that chart about a million times, trying to figure out which emotion goes with each face. I'm not very good at it. I used to use, I have to use the chart because when I look at real faces, I don't get it. Mrs. Brooks says people have a hard time understanding me because I have Asperger's, so I have to try extra hard to understand them, and that means working on emotions. I'd rather work on drawing. Hi, Caitlin, Mrs. Brooks says softly. She still smells like dial body wash. I look at the chart and nod. This means I'm listening, even if there's no eye contact. So how are you? I suck on my sleeve and stare at the chart. How are you feeling? I stare at the chart some more and hear myself sigh. My stomach feels all yucky, like it's at recess, which is my worst subject, but I have to take a deep breath and try to deal with it. Finally, I say, I feel like TiVo. She leans across the table toward me, not too close to my personal space because I'll use my words to tell her to back off if she gets too close. Say again, TiVo. What do you mean? I fast forward through the bad parts and all of a sudden I'm watching something and I'm not sure how I got there. She scratches the part in her hair with her forefinger. The rest of her fingers stick up in the air and move like they're waving. Then she stops. I see, she says. I look around the room. What do you see? What do you see? I asked. I think you'd like to forget about the painful events you've been through. I want to tell her that I prefer TiVo on mute and I wish she'd cooperate. But if... I but if I do, it'll start a whole let's talk about it discussion, so I say nothing. The funeral must have been very difficult, she says. I wonder what she means. We sat in church. It was not very difficult. It was like TiVo on mute. Everyone spoke so quietly I could barely hear them, and almost no one talked to me. They looked at me, which I did not like, and some of them even touched me, which I hate, but no one tried to start a conversation with me. So no one laughed, like crashing glass, and there was no lightning movement, and no one appeared out of nowhere, and nothing happened suddenly. Let's talk about it, she says. I turn around in my chair so I can't see her anymore. I know it's difficult, but you can't keep it all inside. She stops talking but not for long. Did you cry at the funeral? I shake my head. At the funeral, a lot of grown-ups cried, but I don't know why. Most of them had never even met Devon. I think about how much Dad has been crying, and the words jump out of my mouth. Dad cried. Did that upset you? I grip the back of my chair. I didn't like it. Why not? I don't know. Were you sad for him? I don't know. Were you afraid? I don't know. Did it make you uncomfortable? I try to think of a different answer than I don't know, because Devin says people don't like it when, like, I don't know all that much. I don't know why. So I try hard to focus on her question. Did it make you uncomfortable? I, th I think about what is comfortable. Being completely covered by my purple fleece blanket under my bed, or putting my head under the sofa cushion, or reading my dictionary. I did not have any of those things at the funeral. Yes, I was uncomfortable. Why? I don't know. Please stop asking me questions. Caitlin, your father is sad. I turn back toward the facial expressions chart. I wonder how Mrs. Brooks knows what he's feeling right now, and I wonder if I've done something wrong. Why? Her head pokes forward like a turtle before she pulls it back in and says in her nice voice, He misses Devon. Oh, miss is a strange word, I tell her. Have you ever looked it up in the dictionary? There is miss, like Miss Harper, 
the principle. There is miss, like you will miss your bus if you don't hurry because you have to step on every crack. And there is miss, like dead. Do you miss Devon? I don't know. She does the turtle head jerk again, just barely, but I see it. He's not completely gone anyway, I tell her. I think about his bedroom, even though the door is shut, and his bike leaning against the back of the house, and his chest in the corner of the living room. Her face squishes up like she's trying to get it. That's true, she says slowly. A part of Devon will always be with you. Which part, I wonder? No parts of his body are left because he was cremated. That means burned up into ashes. Can you feel him? I look around in the air. I look down at my hands. Are parts of Devon scraping me? Is, is that what I'm supposed to feel? The heat is blowing from the vent in the ceiling and I feel that. But that's only air from the furnace. Or does it have Devon in it? Where do you go when you get burned up and turn into smoke in the air? Maybe you get sucked into furnace systems and blown out through the vents. I shrug. Can you still feel Devon, Mrs. Brooke says again. Maybe. I'm not sure it's really him, though. It could be anyone. What would he feel like? I mean the things he did for you, the things you did together. You'll miss him, but he'll always be with you, just in a different way. I don't want him around in a different way. I want him around in the same way, the way he was before, when he makes me popcorn and hot chocolate, and he tells me what to say and what clothes to wear and how not to be weird so kids won't laugh at me, and he plays basketball with me. He always gives me a chance to win by tripping or moving slowly or going the wrong way when I do a fake. I can tell when he's doing something on purpose by looking at his mouth. His lips move a certain way when he's thinking. When he's being sneaky, his lips move a different way. But when he's being sneaky, he's doing it to be nice to me. That's the Devon I want, not the one who's floating around in the air. A loud country music song starts playing. It's Mrs. Brooke's cell phone. She doesn't answer. She's using her look-at-the-person behavior to look at me, and I don't like like it. Also, she's not answering the phone. I can't stand the cowboy song noise. If you don't answer the phone, you will miss your call, I tell her. She answers, but her eyes still look at the person while she talks on the phone. I get under the table to get away from her eyes. Mrs. Brooke always wants me to look in her eyes. She says we can see emotion in people's eyes. I can't. Eyes always look the same to me. People's lips move all the time, though. That's where the words come out. That's, I can tell what people say by looking at their lips, even though Mrs. Brooke says that's not the only way way to find out because you can't get a complete picture of what someone means just by looking at their lips. I can. I can read lips. I look up at the wood on the bottom side of the table. It's not finished wood, it's raw wood, like Devon's chest. I touch it. It's rough. I rub my finger across the wood, back and forth, harder and harder, until a splinter cuts me. I hit the splinter back. There's a drop of blood on the wood now. It is red, and it spreads, seeping into a crack and bleeding across the unfinished wood, like Devon's chest. No! I rub the wood harder and harder to try to erase the blood, but it won't go away. Caitlin! I press my finger against the raw wood and rub faster and faster, and it hurts, but I don't care because I want to stop the blood, but it's still there, and I can't make it stop. Caitlin! I can't stop it! Caitlin! It's Mrs. Brooke calling from somewhere, and I feel pulling on my arm, but I yank my hand free. No! I have to erase the blood. I have to. I have to. I have to! I can't see or feel or hear anything except for some screaming far away. 
so interesting story so far and again we're just we're getting a lot of insight into Asperger's and what exactly goes on in the mind of someone with Asperger's. Um, some say on Big Bang Theory that Leonard, that would be the skinny guy, Leonard has Asperger's as well. <clears throat> he doesn't quite understand humor and he's not in touch with emotions and has difficulty reading things that are that you can't see like emotions and feelings. Okay, so we'll stop there. That was chapters 1, 2, 3, and next time we'll start with chapter 4. Just looked online, and it's not Leonard on Big Bang Theory, but Sheldon. Sheldon's the one who um, is much like our character Caitlin in our book. And I just thought I would show you my puppy, since I talk about her so much. There she is. She's sleeping. Sundance on a... Sunday, sleeping in the sun. <laughs>